for the youth and the parents that, you know, are going to be watching and listening to this and, you know, you having a 13, 14 year career uh, and playing at the highest level. Uh, what advice would you give to the youth as far as, you know, the necessary steps they need to take to be able to be seen by these um, college coaches, especially in this day and time? I mean, well, like I said, one of the <laughs> Man, going back in the ages when I growing up in the ages where I was growing up, man. What's the what's the TV? Was the TV in black and white? I just did have some black and white. Yeah, I just playing. Yeah, y'all just playing. Hey, what's up? My name is Rodney Cooper. I'm the host of Locker Room Talk with Coop. I got another great guest that's coming in for you guys. I have an Alabama great, Erwin Dudley, played at the University of Alabama from 1999 to 2003. Erwin, he accomplished a lot during his time at Bama. He was seventh all-time in points scored at the University of Alabama. Also, he was fourth all-time in rebounding at Bama as well. And in 2002, he was SEC Player of the Year. And then he went on to play 13 seasons as a professional athlete, and he was very successful with that as well. So I hope you guys enjoy it. And, guys, make sure that you guys like, comment, share this video with somebody you think will enjoy it. And also, hit that red button of those red letters that says subscribe for your boy if you enjoying the show and I hope you guys enjoy the show. So let's get it. So we got the OG, one of Alabama greats, Irwin Dudley. What's up OG, welcome to the show. Good man, how you doing man? I appreciate you having me on. I'm good, yes sir. So uh, so let's jump right into it. So so uh, let the people know your story and take me back as far as you being a kid from Uniontown, Alabama, you know, playing high school ball at R.C. Hatch, up until the point you decided to play for the University of Alabama. Man, I grew up small town, um, mm. Uniontown, Alabama, of course. Uh, we probably got to our beat. I don't know. Now, what's the population? <laughs> 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 hey, look, we was like – Maybe was it like three thousand or thirty five hundred at one point? Okay. Now I think you're down to like two thousand or something now, though. So you know, people. Oh yeah, Hurst, Hurstburg, we got y'all. We got y'all beat five hundred and fifty. Really? But the county, though, the county is bigger, but the town alone is like a little five hundred. I still think that's being generous too, though. But you know, one really? gas station, so one dollar general. So. <laughs> okay. So so it's the same for us. Like 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 our county is county. I think our county might be like. Maybe ten over ten thousand, something like yeah. that. But they just, well, you know, what I'm saying we yeah. yeah. So we um, it's like in Uniontown though. We got we got a Dollar Journal. We got a Family Dollar. Too, okay, so yeah, yeah, dollar. yeah. We got what one two? We got what two gas stations? Yeah, yeah, two gas stations. Whatever like that. And so yeah, it had we had a lot more, man. But you know, right. that, over the years, you know, people moved out and they they moved to different different other other cities, different cities. Uh, Huntsville, Birmingham, Tuscaloosa, and so you know they don't live there anymore. They, I mean, people they still come, you know, they still come back and stuff, but it's still not a lot like having you know people that live there right. um, on a consistent basis. You know that that tax revenue money goes into the you know to the <laughs> right. government yeah. and all that stuff. Yeah. You ain't got all you know what I'm saying, so you lose that money. So you know how that is. You know you start losing money stuff like that, yeah. and then you know business stuff they start to close down or whatever. But this how I know this how I know it's the country. So. <laughs> Do y'all have like a like a big event like during like May Day or something like that? Or I heard oh, it's something so, down there called like the wash or something like that. Foot wash. Foot wash. Yeah. Yeah. Foot yeah, wash. Foot wash. <laughs> yeah. Foot wash. yeah. 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 So it's like, so man, I'm telling you, it's one of those things, man. Like, like it's, it's gotten better though over the uh, you know over the years though. But it started off it started off as a religious event. It started right. off as a yeah. Event. Start off. That's how it always started off. Yeah. Yeah. So it's a pre- yeah. you know you know primitive. I know I'm a primitive Baptist. So primitive Baptist we do mm. you know uh, we wash feet and all that. And right. So it started off as that. Right. But then you know it, you know a bunch of us got in there. And yeah. We the, remixed the young it people got in. Yeah. And, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And so it's like and they had it to where. Um, like I know police officers or like you no know, patrolmen and stuff, they couldn't even come down there. But now, that that, mm-hmm. that they couldn't come on the property. Right. But now they and now is to where they now they can come on the property now. Yeah. So it's like it's a little bit more controlled environment, man. But man, before man, it was oh, it was one of those situations. <laughs> yeah, it was. Yeah. 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 It was all free, man. It was all free. So, right. Yeah. Right. But now, nah, but uh, but take me through your story though. You know, for you. Been from Uniontown, going to RC Hatch, playing high school ball there, and then deciding to play for Bama. 
Man, you know, growing up, uh, young boy, young right. kid, and you now, um, you know, it's it's one of the, you know, it's it's down in the black in the Bible, Bible well, black belt Bible belt area, yeah. and so, um, you know, it, it was poor, but you know, we made it. You know, we you make do with what you have, right? And so, you know, basketball was just one of the things that, especially in my town and in our in our county basketball was like pretty much everything so you know i started off playing basketball with my older brothers and cousins and stuff and it just kind of went from there i, I you know i was I, I grew to love the game um I, you know i was tall or whatever so you know so it was like okay i was tall or whatever but then i also i was tall i had talent mm. to be able to do it yeah and so not really knowing how far you know, it could take me at the time because, you know, you you know, you hear have a few people that go. I had an uncle that went to play the A and M, and you hear other people that go out. You know, the smaller schools, but right. never, you know, not not thinking that, you know, okay, uh, University of Alabama going to play at you know the, the, a, a high D one school. You know, that's right. something that you don't you know you don't think about. And so, with that being said, man, I uh, I ended up my freshman year, well, my ninth grade year in high school. I ended up well, after my ninth grade year high school. I ended up going to uh, go coming up to Alabama to play at a basketball camp, okay. and I played there, played well, and I ended up meeting the uh, AAU coach that coached us at the time, William you know, Pearson, and he asked us, um, you know, he you know he talked to me. He's like, "Hey, you want to play? You play AAU?" I was like, "Nah, I don't even know who he is." Right, and right. So he's yeah. like, "Okay," he said, "I want you, you know, I want you to come and play for us um, next year." I was like, "Okay, cool." And then, lo and behold, he reached out to me, you know, like, you know, reached out to me, you know, talked to me throughout the year. But then mm. when it came around to the summer, he was like, hey, I want you on the team. And I'm yeah. like, okay, cool. And so, you know, <clears throat> like I said, the team was all, the team was all the way up in Huntsville. Mm. So yeah. I had to, you know, we had to make that drive to Huntsville. And yeah. so, you know, I ended up playing with them. I ended up playing at the time. We had uh, Marvin Stone, rest in peace. He was like the number one player in the nation when mm. I, you know, when I, when I was coming out. And so it was him and uh, Demar Johnson. They was like, you know, back and forth, one and number one and number two, or whatever. So on the same yeah. team, that's crazy. Well, yeah. well, not not on the same team. It was okay. just those two. They was going. Oh, back those two going back. Who's, okay, who's, okay. Who's, okay. Yeah. yeah. Who was the top? You know, top players, man, in the uh, you know top players, you know, at that time. Mm-hmm. And so you know, he, so the team was, you know, pretty much just forming around Marvin because Marvin, you know, he was number one. You right. Know, Nike, Nike was our sponsor and all that stuff. So it was cool. So it was me, him. Roger Zard, um, Terrence, he played on the team as well. And then we had some other guys on the team that I'm played. Glad you brought so Roger Ro- Zard though, because because I got a question. Well, uh... <laughs> <laughs> so, we had, so we had a we had a we had a um, we had a solid squad, man. And so we was like, we made some noise, man. Won you know won some games, won, you know, and, and we did well. And then, like I said, you know, playing and stuff over the years, you know, you get notoriety and stuff. And man, you know, I was actually I was actually so yeah, man, I'm I'm actually pretty good. And then, I, you know, then after that, you know, after being on the AU circuit, you get mail and, you know, pe- you know people right. recruit you and stuff, man. And then it just kind of, it just kind of really, it just took off from there. Um, I had schools writing me from all over. Um, all, pretty much all the SEC schools were recruiting me. I had some ACC schools. They were, they were mm-hmm. on me pretty heavy. Um, you know, Conference USA. But um, at the end of the day, like, you know, I, my heart, I, my heart was always here at Alabama. You know, I felt. I feel more comfortable here. Um, I, I visited Auburn. I knew mm-hmm. about. It. I had an uncle that lived down there in Auburn, so yeah. I knew all about that. Um, you know, I was. I spent. You know, I spent some summers there. Um, it was. Yeah, some summers there with him, and you mm-hmm. know, going going around Auburn and you know going into different places in Auburn. I like. I mean, it was okay, but it, it right. was still one. It still don't compare to. You know, it didn't compare to Alabama then. It still don't right. compare to now, man. It just. It's like you know. It's like. One one place is here, you know, like, you know <laughs> right, right, like, right. So, so it was just like it was just almost like a no brainer for me. Um, you know, I was comfortable here. Then it's only a, like an hour away from my hometown, mm, so that yeah. was another thing. You know, my mom and with my mom and family and all of them, they was able to come up and stuff. So that was that was another you know factor for me, man. And then opportunity, um, the opportunity to come in and you know play right away, and um, you know we signed end up signing here, man. And Coach Godfrey, he uh, he you know he brought us in and. You know, he started. He started five freshmen, man. He, you know, he gave us the keys to the car and like, here, y'all drive. And that's so, crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Crazy. So he yeah. gave the key. Yeah, we started all five of us. We started me, Rod, Terrence, and then we had another guy, Kenny Walker, that he came. He's from Jacksonville. Yeah. Him and you know, we we started, man, and just you know, he just like here, drive the drive the car. And so you know, mm-hmm. he, and, you know, we was his first recruiting class coming in, and man, we was able to make the best of. It, man, we was some growing pains my first year. 
Yeah. You know, just you know, just for all of us, you know, uh, we want some games, but you know, I think we might end up we end up we ended up going like five hundred, but I mean, you know, we was like starting five freshmen, you know, right? You know, right. You know, I don't think a lot of you know nowadays I don't think a lot of schools would even think about starting five freshmen, but right. they were just you know a gamble that he took and he believed in us, and so and at the end, I think you know, and it, it did pay out for us for us to be able to go out and in two thousand two, man, and win the champ doing the um win the title man it was, it was yeah. great that's crazy that's pretty much being like an outlier because back then it was big on like playing three year four year players like oh. and just the simple fact for him taking that leap and starting five freshmen that's you know that took some that took some courage right there oh yeah but then yeah. like you said you know he was his first year um you know he you know he played at Bama as well so he was you mm, know right. he was back at home and like I said, they gave him the keys to drive. They gave him the keys to drive the car to be a head coach, and then he passed them on to us. Like, look, right. I want to try to go out there and play and do you know do what you do. I know y'all gonna make mistakes. I know these guys are big and stronger, but at right. the end of the day, you know that experience that for us playing, best teacher you know, playing as yeah, yeah, that's exactly the best teacher. Yeah, right, right. I got you. So, so who was the person or like group of people that inspired you to be great growing up? So, man, I had for me instrumental man in my life, man. Is you know. One, you know, I'm a big, you know, I'm a big believer. You know, that was that was one thing. Even though I was young, I still always believed in the man above. So that that was one big thing. That was one thing for me. And right. then I had, you know, I had a grandmother that 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 worked hard, man. You know, I was around. I watched her, watch what she what she did and how she did things, man. Mm-hmm. You know, she she always had us doing stuff and work, man. So that was like part. That was part of my inspiration. And my mom, of course. Um, you know, she was one of you know sweet ladies, man. She, you know, she did what she could for us, and you know, it just happened. I had brothers, <clears throat> excuse me. I had brothers, and my my dad, my dad was around as well. So you know what I'm saying. So it was just like it was just a whole, it's a, a whole like collaboration of you know of like different family, like yeah. family and, you know, and friends and stuff that helped me, man. That kind of motivate me to kind of do you know do it, you know do what I did. Right. Got you. And then I know. Uh... I'm a believer too in the man above too, and it and it's crazy because I I really feel like you know everything happened for a reason. So with you not knowing anything about AU basketball, and then your ninth grade year you going into the uh, Alabama basketball camp, and then you know your AU coach, you know your put your future AU coach end up seeing you at the camp, and then y'all just missed, and then you went yep. and played for his team that was like what a couple hours away, like Huntsville. So it's crazy how like how yep. God aligned things for for. Pretty much, we already got destined for you, so it, it, it's crazy. But uh, oh yeah, most, oh yeah, yeah. If you really think about it, it's crazy. Like just like with me, like the same thing. I didn't know nothing about AU basketball. Like they sent the mail to my high school, and my my high school coach didn't know nothing about it. And I just went and tried out, you know, did my thing, and you know they brought me on. But if that letter would have never came, I I would have probably just stayed playing, you know, just high school ball and not travel ball. And then you know, mm-hmm. with our schools being in those country towns, they really have to dig to find us. So, <laughs> so, uh, mm-hmm. but yeah, but but that's crazy. So, so, at what age did you, uh, you know, decide to take the game serious? Was it was it a particular moment where you was like, "Yo, I need to take this serious," or was you know somebody that spoke that belief into you? Man, honestly, man, like you know, I you know, I, for the most part, man. I always took, I took it serious all the time. I mm, mean, okay. I, 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 yeah. like, you know, even like, so I really kind of start like in junior high, man. Like I was one of the ones that, and still to this day, man, I was one of the ones, you know, like, you know, like a lot of people, they don't look at like, they don't look at stretching as being like really important to, you know what I'm saying? You perform like, I was, I was stretching and doing stretch, doing regular stretching and stuff before practice, you know, um, in my, but like, how you knew that though? How you, how you got to, so how you knew that though? Did, it, did you see it from somebody else or what? Or, I mean, mm-hmm. I just heard, you know, people told me, like, coaches coach was like, yeah, okay. they listen to, like, the coaches tell you, like, look, you need to stretch or whatever, you need to stretch or whatever. And, you know, some people do it then, you know, some people do it then, they'll do it one day, then the next day they don't do it. So <laughs> right, right. I kind of, it stuck with me, man, it's all these years, and I still, I still do that. Um, you know, I have, I had one moment, man, where, you know, it kind of like, I think it kind of helped me, it propelled me or whatever to, I guess, you know, to, to be the, to be the, the rebounder that that I that I was um or have been you know over my career, right. um I never forget we was in gym class and then uh you know and I you know you know I wasn't getting the ball or whatever right so mm-hmm. I was like yeah. I told the coach like man he said I ain't passed me the ball and he was like go get if you want the ball go get the ball get, and then yeah. that right there like said like a it's like a light bulb went off in my mm-hmm. head and man and I 
and that right there stuck with me or whatever. So I, I just made I just made a conscious effort to to go and get and go and get rebounds. And so that's one that's the reason why um I think that I one of the reasons why, you know, that I was able to to, to rebound like I was because I yeah. kept that in mind. But also it was, you know, it's a, it's also it, it's a will too. So you know, it, you know rebound is rebounding is a will. And you right. have to want it, and so like I give you. A it doesn't. It doesn't necessarily take that. talent to uh sure to rebound Reggie the ball. Had... Yeah. And I do like, know Reggie like Evans. He he yeah, a dog. Sure him. Like he, he a dog. Like he... Yeah. Yeah. He he had he had no offensive skill. It's like he almost like the same uh, a, a bigger version of Dennis Rodman. Right. But it's the same yeah. thing. They had like really no not a lot whole lot of skill. But you talking about rebound the basketball, go get the ball. I mean, it's it, it just a will to want, they just will to go get the ball, and that's what they did. Right. And then on top of that, I know I be talking uh, to guys all the time, especially like, you know, we're like the man in, you know, high school, and, you know, a few of us be the man in college and stuff like that. But when you get to the pros, they already have, you know, the, the Michael Jordans, the LeBron James, the, the Kobe Bryans and stuff like that. So pretty much uh, the quote-unquote superstars, but – the thing is, once you get into the league, you got to find your niche. And you got to star in that role. And I feel, and I feel like Reggie Evans, you know, had no offensive skill, yep. but he had a long career just off of rebounding. So yep, that's yeah, it right. Yeah. So like you were saying, it's definitely like a will and a mindset behind you know rebounding the ball, and that's why you won the top rebounders ever at, at Alabama. So, but uh, but share with the people as far as you know your top five schools uh coming out of high school and what I know you saying as far as you know with Bama being you know a little over an hour away from your hometown that would made it you know easier for you but what what were some other uh reasons why Bama uh topped the other schools man I mean just like I said I it was you know I had the the home field um right. also you know I had a I hold a sister she you know she had just you know just graduated from Alabama a few years you know prior so that was another thing. And then, you know, my family, my family were, you know, they were Alabama fans as well. So it kind of like, you know, it was like a, almost like a no brain. And we just, I mean, overall, we just felt comfortable, um, you know, with, you know, with the program and, you know, with yeah. the city and all that stuff. But um, my top five was, man, you know, of course, Alabama was one. Right. I had Auburn, they, I, I, Auburn, I, they, 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 they recruited me heavy, right. but, uh, they recruited me heavy. Um, I was I was a fan of Georgia Tech. Uh, Bobby Primmons at the time he was a coach. He okay. came in and uh, he came in and recruited me. Um, well, he came in for a home visit. Him mm -hmm. and then uh, also uh, Rick Barnes. He was at uh, Clemson at the time, okay. before, right before he left to go to um, Texas. Yeah. And so he, when he left to go to Texas, man, I uh, you know I, I kind of dropped him or whatever. I, I didn't even consider him anymore. Or whatever. You yeah. know, I, I like you know I wanted I like Rick Barnes as a coach, and so. Mm -hmm. I didn't even consider them. And then UAB, UAB was on, they, they recruited me heavily as well too. Yeah, okay, I got you. And then I know this is a little bit off topic, but I just want to let the people know that's going to be watching this. Like, the reason why I'm drinking this gallon of water is because I'm doing like a challenge right now. So I don't want people to be like, man, what this dude doing with this gallon, <laughs> drinking this gallon of water? So I got I got to drink a gallon a day, but it's this challenge I'm doing. I'm really just doing it for the discipline and the, being consistent with it. But it's crazy, but but uh, oh, no, making yeah, a difference though. Surprised, man. Hey, I'm telling you, you'll be surprised, man. You know, you drink, you're doing that, drinking that gallon of water. Yeah. You'll be surprised at how your body, how your body feels, how your body, how your right. skin looks, and all yeah. that stuff, man. Like, right. I, yeah, I mean, I'm telling you, it is something else. Like, it, it, it does. People don't understand. It does a lot. It does wonders to your body. Right. Right. For sure. So, uh, so with everything you know, you accomplished uh, in college. You know, being an All American, man, SEC Player of the Year. You know, in 2002, being um All SEC First Team pick and, and and much more. Uh, a lot of people, you know, they see the byproduct as far as the, the work that you uh, that you put in. But what was the biggest challenge um, for you going from high school uh, to playing at the college level? So the, <clears throat> the biggest challenge for me, man, it was, you know, of course, you have guys, um, you know, they were they were, you know, the, the college game was a lot. Um, faster than high school, and then right. and then the pro pro game is a lot faster than high school. I mean, a lot faster than college. Mm -hmm. And so for me, um, the strength part, man. I mean, you you did down there. We you know coming in as a freshman, you battling like Florida. They had uh, Udonis has them, and mm -hmm. they had big guys like that, Matt Bonner. So you know, yeah. those guys were huge. And then Vandy had. Uh, 
uh, Matt Friedge, he was a big, and then, you know, he had some other seven-footers. Then you go down to uh, Ole Miss, they had Raheem Lockhart, Raheem Lockhart, and they had they had their, their guy. So, yeah. man, it was just, you know, me getting stronger because, you know, when I came into college, man, I probably was – I might have been. I think I might have been like two ten, two eighteen, or something like that. So man, it was just two ten at, at, at six nine, out. six eight, six nine. Well, you yeah, like what six nine, six ten? No, I'm six eight. Six eight. Hey, two ten. Yeah, I bet you was flying because the wind was taking you. <laughs> oh yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, I was, I was paper thin, man. But yeah, you know that's that's the beauty of a man, like being able to come to school and you know being able to you know be on be on you know have have access to food and nutrition right, and right. having access to a strengthening coach and and all that stuff man you know to get you prepared for stuff like that man so that was one of the things so i had to work my tail off in the weight room like weight room mm. was you know because again in high school you know i didn't lift i didn't lift weights you know everything right. that yeah. i did was pretty much off of sheer talent and will um, right. you know and, you know now i know a lot of schools now um they do they probably they do some high they do some lifting and stuff but i know when i came through it was not like that. Right. And so, uh, and so for me, man, just coming in and, and, and working my tail off, getting in the weight room and doing what I needed to do and, uh, you know, just working on my, my speed and my agility as well. Those were the things that I did, you know, that, that, that I had to, to get used to doing. Got you. And then, uh, with you putting that work in the weight room, it definitely paid off. And on top of, you know, with your coach, you know, give me that advice that, that mama, what is the, the, the switch flip as far as, uh, you know, if they not passing the ball, go get it out the glass. So, because, you know, you led mm-hmm. the, you led the conference three years in a row in rebounding and, you know, it, up until that point, it hasn't been done since uh, Shaquille O'Neal, you know, the big diesel. So, uh, so I know with you being, you know, seven all time in scoring at Alabama, being fourth all time in uh, rebounding at Alabama. Uh, talk about your workout regimen and your, and what was your focus like? Because I want the kids to be able to see, you know what type of work it takes to be great. Man, my my focus was always, and, and I and I and I think that that's I think the reason why I was able to to uh, you know to to prosper and have such a, a long fruitful career. Um, my 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 work ethic, or uh, me being me getting better, it was it was no it was predicated on me getting better myself personally, but I knew that me getting better would help the team overall. Mm. So I've always looked at, you know, saying me being able to to play the game of basketball because playing the best game of basketball, I knew that, you know, I had teammates that were, that, I, that relied on me. So right. I wanted yeah. to make sure that, you know, when the time came that I was able to, you know, to produce and do what I needed to do. Mm. Um, I've always looked at it as a game of, you know, I, I was I was a pass first, honestly. Like I passed it. Like I didn't mind, you know. I didn't mind who got the glory. So right. it could be you. It could be the next man. It could be whoever. Because at the end of the day, if you like, I'm a big believer. In, if you do what you're supposed to do, then everything else gonna fall in place. And that's how I looked at it on the court or whatever. So I rebound. I did this right. You know, I did what I I, I played. I, I played a role, whether you know whether you believe it or not. Because I knew I had guys on my team that you know they could shoot the ball and they shot right. the ball. And I knew that one of my one of my roles was to go get a rebound. And you know, I posted up as well. They threw me the ball as well. But one thing that they did do, you know, and I knew that I was good at, I was good at rebound. I've had mm-hmm. 20, 20 rebound, 25 rebound games. So yeah. I knew that's one thing that I was actually good at. And so it didn't bother mm-hmm. me if, you know, guys shot the ball. And, and, and you know, and, you know, when people say, oh, this guy's selfish, that, that one thing that doesn't bother me because I look at that, you know, okay, yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, they can be selfish one way, but right. the ball is always going to find a way to get back to you if you do right. what you're supposed to do. And I've always, you know, I've always taken that into consideration. And it, and it's crazy that you say that because I be talking about on the different episodes how, you know, sports correlate to, to business and life. Like, so much is crazy. Like, just like what you saying, like, you understand what your strengths were and you just – you know, honed on that. So just like with business, you know, figuring out what your strengths strengths are and then as far as your weaknesses, putting people around you that that can fill those voids as far as where you weak at so that the whole the common goal is to make sure that the, the business is successful. The common goal with sports is to make sure the team is successful. Like so if you're trying to do a alone, it, it's not gonna work. So you know what the slogan is, you want if you want to go fast, you go alone, but if you want to go far, you go together. So it's the same it's the same principles and it and it and it's crazy like once you like think about that as far as how sports and business and life and everything is all it's all like the same principle. So so uh 
So I had um, OG Rod Grizzard on the show. I know you said a little bit earlier as far as you know you guys yeah. are AU teammates, and I'm glad you brought him up. And uh, shout out Rod Grizzard, man. So Rod told a story. It, it involved you. You know, y'all was playing LSU on the road. And he said, man, it was this one fan that had a uh, basketball head with just the eyes uh, mm -hmm. cut, cut, out, cut open or whatever. And he said, man, the game was going back and forth. Y'all play LSU on the road. And he just kept saying stuff crazy and then got to the point where he was saying stuff disrespectful. He said, like, like in the yep. middle of the play, y'all was getting back. And he said he had told you. He was like, man, E-Dub, you heard what you heard old dude say? You was like, yeah. He said, oh, okay. He said, well, I'm going to see about the old boy after the game. You was like, what? But <laughs> He was like, what? But y'all had to go get y'all man. So after the game, he said uh, he went over the scores table, then the sheriff ended up grabbing him. But he said it so nonchalant. I was like, man, hold on, hold on. We can't just we can't just go past it like that's just some <laughs> like that's just something normal. But yeah. but I'm gonna just start right there and let you you know tell your story as far as uh what happened during that time when y'all was playing to get LSU. So yeah, so during that time, man, it was a it was like a heated heated you know um, battle. Um, yeah. Not 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 per se with the players, but I think the coaches or whatever. So the coaches had a little thing going on or whatever. So. Okay. You know, we kind of, you know, so and it kind of, it kind of fit and kind of came back into the players, you know. Right, right. And so, and you know how playing in the SEC, uh, how disrespectful, you know, fans could be. Oh, yeah. Uh, we know. Yeah. And so, um, the guy, he said something, man, and, you know, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a nice guy. I, I'm an I'm a overall nice guy. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, you know. You know, I don't. You know, if you push me, then yeah, it's you know, and then you push the buttons, the wrong buttons, then I, right. I'll go and you know, I, you can take me there. Right. But for the most part, you know, I'm, I'm just like I'm, I'm a humble, cool, laid back guy. Whatever, this is how I am. That's how right. you know. That's how we be. Right. But the guy, he said some man, and you know, it's just some stuff that you, you know that you say, man, that you don't that you don't ever, man, that you don't ever you don't ever say to another person, and so right. and you just have to, you know, you gotta do what you gotta do. For that, man. And so, <laughs> Right. It just went from there, but I, you know, it it was just that game. That that game right there was like a, it was, it was one of the one of the uh, great victory, great victories that we had. Mm. Uh, you know, as you know, as a as a as a club, you know, when we was there at Alabama, just as a team, we was at at Alabama because you know right on the table, man. That was like man, like a sour release because you know it's. Man, going out there to LSU, man, you know that it's 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 tough when you know you know tough tough when it anywhere in SEC, but it's just going down right. there, Baton Rouge, and you know their fans are you know their fans are considered some of you know some of the worst fans. So it was just one of those times, man. It was just a sigh of relief, man, to go down there to beat LSU, and you know they had some talented guy. They had Stroh Miles Wolf and mm. Jabari Smith, and they yeah. had some, they had some guys Torch Bright and. Uh, and all those guys, Ronald Dupree. So they had a, they okay. had some good players, man. And just to go down there and man, being able to go down there, man, and, and win and get a victory, man, like it was, it was like it was a sigh of release, okay. sigh of relief. So okay, so so I just I just wanted to make sure I wanted to make sure that the OG if the OG was uh if he was capping or if he really was uh or if he really went through what he was saying, okay. So uh, OG, it, it was funny when Rod he was talking about it. He was like, nah, yeah, he nah, like, yeah, I had true. to go see old nah, boy. Yeah, he the truth. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but, that's, uh, that's true. That's the truth, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But uh so what was a memorable moment for you uh that you could share with the fans uh during your time at Bama? Man, I, I you know, I tell everybody it's my most memorable moment moment was yeah. us winning in uh two thousand two, being able to uh to come, you know, come through in a um, season like that, nobody expected us to win, and being able to uh, to come in, uh, you know, that year to do what we did. The year before that, we uh, we felt like we got snubbed from the NCAA tournament, mm. and for us to come in and um, go, we we on that what our sophomore year, we felt like we should have got in, so we ended up playing in NIT, yeah. and we you know we we played, we you know we decided as a team like look. We gonna make the best of this right here. We gonna make the best of this tournament. You know, still opportunity to play, and so we ended up going up to uh, New York or whatever. We lost to Tulsa in the finals of the NIT, mm -hmm. and I think that was the actual turning point for us. As you know, as you know, as his first recruiting class, I think that was a turning point for us because we were able to come in and uh, 
we was able to come in and then that that our junior year we had a really good season we, yeah. we went on the roll and we won a few games and you know like i said <clears throat> i think this that plan you know help help season us you know we went to went up to purdue we won and we, mm. we were on the road and won a few games and stuff doing you know during that tournament in yeah. our, team, our sophomore year so coming into our junior year you know going we went to Kentucky and beat Kentucky. We went up to, to, to uh, Knoxville. We beat Tennessee. We beat Georgia on the road. So, right. you know, all those teams, you know, one season, man, that, that's, they, you know, that was like unheard of, man, to be able to do, be able to do that. And so I think that, uh, you know, with us winning those games on the road and then have an opportunity to come home and and seal a victory by being seal a victory by being Florida man that was like yeah. that was like one of a kind man so we was able to get that done man and it was like a it was like a it was a surreal feeling man to come in there and beat Florida at home in front of all the fans I still I still remember that like like it's today um, you know we won Pet we made the layup right and the fans went to the floor the man uh, we had the, had the put back right. Yep, yeah, yeah. The layup, yep. And so, man, it was just, man, Ernest passing the ball, man, his layup. He cut back door, man. But like I said, you know, you no, know, Petway, you know, he he was one of the guys that that uh, came in. A lot of people didn't give him. He don't get a, he don't get enough credit. I mean, they get it. You know, they they know for his his uh, red shoes, but right, exactly. He came in, man. He came in to work his tail off, man, to be you know to be the to be the person that he is today. Uh, you know, coming into Alabama on a you know on an academic scholarship because he. You know, they didn't give him a, a scholarship, or a letter scholarship right. originally. Yeah. And him coming in, man, working his tail off and not being ranked, you know, not even being ranked, in, you know, by, you know, by any any agency or whatever. And mm -hmm. him come in and, you know, his name to be noted the way it is. It, it was like uh, unbelievable, man. And he just, he, he understood the game and he just had a grit a, a about him that he wanted to work hard and come in and do the best that he could do. And so, he, he like I said he was the reason why he was the reason why because if he had a cut back door, you know, because Ernie was in a he, he was yeah. he was jammed on the on the baseline sideline, <laughs> and then Petway had a cut back door, yeah. he was gonna fall out of bounds. But he he actually he cut back door man, and, and that's part of just understanding the game. It's not about that right there. It's not a skill. That's just right there. Just understanding the reading the game. Mm, yeah. And so he was able to do that. But then so then that cellar wasn't reading, like no X in the nose. It pretty much he was just reading the reaction. No, uh -uh. no. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, so we won that. We won that ring. We got that ring, man. And then on top of that, I was the uh, I was the player of the year, man. So that was that was a huge honor for me. Mm -hmm. um, and then also then Mo, he uh, he also won the freshman of the year as well. So it was just, it was big, man. It was big yeah. for us to come in and do that, man. And you know, like I said, nobody expected us. They had that. I, I forgot what they had us listed at to win it, but I think we probably was like at the bottom of the league, you know, mm -hmm. something like wow. that. Yeah, man. we yeah we yeah. were expected to win. Yeah, but the question is though. The question is though. After a game, after a win in a game like that, what y'all do after the game? Nah, I'll just play. We ain't, we ain't got, we ain't got to answer that. We ain't, we ain't got to answer that. We ain't got to answer that. So, so without getting nobody in trouble, man, what was one of uh, the funniest memories? You know, either on the court or off the court uh, that you could share with the people uh, without getting nobody in trouble. So, so what was the uh, funniest memory you can uh, remember? Man, I think one. Don't well, get I nobody know, in one, trouble now. Don't get nobody. Nah, you know, we all grown. Nah, you know, we. <laughs> no, nah, we. I mean, I, we. I know. Um, I think it was it was Rambo and Gerald Wallace. I think they get. was. I think they get. They were little at uh, We was one of our other. We was one of our other. We was at Solomon Davis' apartment, or whatever. And they got the wrestling. <laughs> I don't know what. You know how they got the wrestling, whatever, like that. Yeah. And they ended up. They fell on. I think they fell on his table and broke his table or whatever. Yeah, that was like probably like the, one of the funniest things or ever. Like, cause they were wrestling or whatever. You know how. You know how it is, man. It's like, man, you know, it, it, it's with know, every so team, like, man. You around a bunch of guys, yeah, man. You go yeah, get the wrestling. Yeah, yeah I always happy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, I got yeah. you. <laughs> That's that, 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 that was definitely one of the funniest moments I think. Yeah, most yeah. definitely. I got you. So uh so let's switch gears a little bit. So uh it's been a common thread on uh, you know, looking at the people comments that be, you know, watching and and listening to the show and stuff like that. And and then like hearing some of the guys talk a little bit about, you know, their stories and stuff like that. Um the common thread has been sports identity. So you know, it's it, so recently it was like a news article that came out about, uh, you know, LaMarcus Aldridge. You know, he was talking about he was going through depression, you know, since he retired. But he had uh, retired unexpectedly because he had like heart issues that just came out of nowhere. So he had to, you know, make the best decision for him and his family. So, uh, yeah. so talk a little bit about that as far as, you know, 
when you you know you played 13 14 years professionally uh what you do as far as preparing yourself to be able to uh transition to what was next after basketball because a lot of guys you know they can't get out of that you know I'm I'm a basketball player and they can't really make that transition or they have a tough time during that period and go through you know like depression and, and stuff like that so so talk about that and how you make that transition so for me man it's like um for me as a person man it you know it still always goes back to you know to my roots yeah. um being able to being able to um like I said work never been never been bashful or shy of you know getting my hands dirty or working so that's that's right. one of the things um and then also, man, you know, just, you know, keeping yourself busy doing stuff. Like, I don't, you know, I look at it, man, I don't have time to, you know what I'm saying, that just kind of think about it. I mean, I, I'm blessed to be able to go out and um, do things. Like, I have, you know, I have kids, young kids and stuff. And, I, you know, I got one daughter I'm trying to get, you know, get them through college. And then right. I have two two younger ones that, that I, you know, that I want to be a, um, a father figure role model to mm. them as well. So yeah. they keep me busy. And then just you know, just being around other kids too, because I know that, um, especially like in this area, um, being a role model to kids. Well, I'm, I don't mind saying that I am a role model because I think mm. you know, I know, I know people look up to me or whatever. Right. And that's there's no there's no shame in me saying that. Um, yeah. Um, because I want I I love being a role model to kids because I again you know we have so much going on in in today's society. Right. And, you know, it, I mean, it's not just Tuscaloosa, it's everywhere and all over mm -hmm. the world. You have so much going on and you need positive male role models. And so right. I look at that. So, you know, I don't have time to, you know, really think about, yeah, do I miss playing basketball? Yeah, I miss playing basketball. I mean, because, I mean, you've done it for so long. You know, that's your whole that, life. That, it, yeah. yeah, your whole life, it consumed, it consumed you. And right. so, yeah, I, I can understand how 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 it could be, you know, not saying, oh, I don't, you know, I don't want to leave the game, but, you know, turn the switch off because you've been doing it for so long. But, right. you know, once you kind of get get your mindset into something else, then it kind of just, it kind of like just, you know, drifts away from your mind and you just go right. and, you know, move into the opposite direction. Yeah, no, I'm glad you said that because it's it's the same thing for me. Like, I know you saying as far as your kids, that's a part of your, your why, your drive and stuff like that. And also being around other kids and being a role model for them. Like, that's a part of my why, a part of my motivation, too, is like, you know, me and you both, we come from small towns and, and things like that. So for me, my motivation, my drive is to, you know, to show the kids that it's possible and whatever you want to do. So I want to be like one of my things is like, yeah, I made it to where I made it to in basketball. But I also want to say, hey, I have this business that's giving value to the world. Hey, I have this nonprofit. Hey, I had this charity that I donate to every year, like being multifaceted, not just being just, you know, just a basketball player. So I want to show the kids that. You know, you're some talent and you want to take it serious, stuff like that. Yeah, you can go to sports, right? Any area you can do it, it's possible. Like, I understand, like, you know, it's limited resources and stuff like that. Like, yeah, uh, when I'm talking to these kids, I'm like, I'm going to show empathy, but we're not going to use that as an excuse. You know what I mean? So, because me and mm -hmm. you both did it, and then, you know, you, you even did it to a, a higher level, but, you know, but just like now, like with your uh, or your foundation you have now, we're going to talk a little bit about that um, in a minute. But, you know, just making sure that you, like you said, keep yourself busy because, you know, an idle mind, you know, the enemy really can attack it. So so uh, mm -hmm. so definitely keep yourself busy. And I know it's a lot of athletes that, you know, once the, the ball stop bouncing, so they can't run another yard or hit another baseball, like they really go through that that dark space. And I, I went through that, you know, my injury, you know, mm -hmm. uh, it was unexpected. I had to sit out for a year, and then next thing you know, you know, the uh, the team start, you know, was skeptical about my wrist and stuff like that. I went to the G League, then you know, politics and stuff happened like that. And then when I went through that rehab and stuff like that, I went through a, I went through a dark place, like you know, I depressed, you know, you know, just like you were saying, you know, being a role model. I'm a, I was, I think, I guess I'm a role model to people. Like they always come to me for advice and stuff like that. Like I'm I'm being that strong guy. And then you know, as black men, we can't show that we weak and stuff like that. What we think is weak, but you know, they all what you being soft for and stuff like that. But uh, like I said on the episode with uh, with Donnie Lee, you know, I smile on the outside but hurt on the inside because you know I had everything lined up as far as you know the 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 contracts and all that stuff like that stuff that's gonna be able to change, you know, my family and, you know, generations life as far as like if I kept producing at a high level and stuff like that. But, you know, uh, mm -hmm. you know, God had other plans for me. And I really do believe, you know, sometimes we have plans for ourselves and we think it's a big plan, but, you know, he has something that a lot bigger than what we can all imagine. So 
So I, then I, I know as far as a part of my college, something with the kids because I have a soft, I have a soft spot for the kids and stuff like that. So yeah. I just don't know what that so, looks like. Go ahead. So for, so for me, man, I'm, yeah. I mean, you brought that up. I wasn't even going to bring it up, but <laughs> yeah. I, I, I agree with you on, on the part where you say, um, we talk about, you know, like going through an injury, you know, you yeah. kind of was in the dark. Place. I don't say I was in a dark place or whatever. Um, yeah. I didn't. I know when I got I got hurt, I injured my knee, broke my kneecap at Portsmouth. And, mm, okay. and I was out for like a year, year and a half or whatever. And, mm. man, you know, it's that point in time, too. Like, you know, I didn't want to – I didn't really want to talk to anybody right. either, man. Because, you, you know, you, you work so hard for this and, you know, and – you know, when it's come when it comes to that point to where, you know, it's okay, it's time for you to really produce because you're trying right. to go out and being able to, to make money and do what you know what I'm saying right. and provide for your family. family right. And this injury happened to you, whatever and then you know what I'm saying, you don't know what to expect because at the time uh, my injury, um, it was only like three or four people that had, you know, had that type of injury. Mm. It was Antonio McDice. Yeah. Um it was a field it was a field goal kicker and a NASCAR driver. Wow. And that was it, and that was on three different sports too. So, <laughs> it, so they told me, um, it was like, man, it was like, um, you know, they told me about like, man, I like, you know, what I was, you know, what am I gonna do? Yeah. And uh, you know, just going through the rehab process, man. I had my first surgery, um, went pretty good, and then, um, you know, it was, it was a humbling, it was a humbling experience, and then my knee still not healing the way it, way it's supposed to. Ended up having ended up breaking it again in another place, mm. and then that Dang. second, that second, then the second operation was the operation that kind of got me that well, they got me over the hump. I was mm -hmm. able to, you know, I, I I was able to start healing properly, and yeah. then I was able to go and you know start you know, start my professional career. Right. But um, you know, and I still get this question today. A lot of people are like, man, why you didn't come out your junior year, and you know, what I'm saying blah blah, but. You know, yeah, you look back at this stuff, but at, this, at the same time, like I tell people all the time, whatever was meant for you, you know, is going to happen. Who's it's to say, happen, if I, right. even if I had took that, took that, you know, the left out of my junior year, who's to say yeah. I would have got drafted? Who's to say I would have been, you know, I wouldn't have right. got, you know, went somewhere else. So, again. And you can always say what could have been if what, what the, yeah. if this happened and yeah. that happened. You can, you can always go back and say if I would have, you know, chose this route and chose that route, man. But, yeah, but I, I feel you on that because. Mm -hmm. It definitely was a it definitely was a tough time, you know. Me just sitting up in the room in the cast like this, you know, and then my my wrist was like swollen. My my then it was my left hand too. I'm left handed, mm -hmm. so yeah. so it was crazy, man. Like going through that process and you know dealing with the uh, the demons and the enemies that I had to fight, like in my head. And you know, I was I was the same way, man. I isolate myself from everybody, you know, trying to trying to figure it out and get through it. Cause that was my first time ever being injured, like so. Yeah, like, of course, I had. Same. You said same, okay? Because I have, you know, sprained ankles and stuff like that. You can play through that, yeah, but uh, like, that, yeah, that's that's nothing. But actually having to sit down for a year and like go through that process and the whole my whole left side weak because I I didn't use my my arm or nothing, just sending the cast like mm -hmm. that. It was it was rough, man. So uh, so so for uh for the youth and the parents that you know are uh, going to be watching and listening to this, and you know you having a 13, 14 year career uh and playing at the highest level uh. What advice would you give to the youth as far as, you know, the necessary steps they need to take to be able to be seen by these um, college coaches, especially in this day and time? I mean, well, like I said, when, man, going back in the ages when I was growing up in the ages where I was growing up, man. What's the, what's the TV? Was the TV in black and white? <laughs> oh, just, no, it just, wasn't that. I'm just we did, we did have some black and white. Yeah, I'm just color. playing. Yeah, y'all just playing. We had some color. But, man. Um, honestly, man, like now nowadays, man, there's so many, it's so many different platforms, social media platforms, right. you know, TV, so you can you can get your put your name out there, get yourself out there. I right. mean that that's not a problem because you have so many, you know, other other opportunities. You know, you can, for example, you can do a, you can IG, you can do yeah. TikTok, you can yeah. do this, you can do that. So you have opportunities. So from mm. like, like when I was growing up. It was all about, you know what I'm saying, if a scout comes to the gym and see you playing and it's right. like word of mouth, you know, yeah. cell phones would even be like that. So now, right. nowadays, you can get everything like that in the palm of your hand. Right. And so, yeah. you know, I, I advise kids, you know, just if, you know, if you want to be seen, just, you know, just work, put your work in, right. post it, 
and right. keep posting, being consistent with consistent, your posting, right. being yeah, being consistent with it, being consistent with you know what I'm saying your workouts and being you know those are the things that you have to do, being consistent with mm-hmm. your workout and being consistent posting stuff because if you mm-hmm. keep posting, somebody gonna find somebody you, you know gonna find like right. like they tell you like it's 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 too, it's too many it's too many scout agencies, too many scouts, it's too many people out here, too many ways to get to get news to where nobody right. can't find you. Whatever. So and all then, you have to do is put in the yeah. work. You put in the work, you're gonna be found. Right. And then it's crazy because I know on the second episode, uh, Christian Jones, wide receiver at Bama, uh, he was talking about how he said he can't remember the school or the kid name and stuff like that. He said he was scrolling on Twitter and seeing this story. Like this kid, all he's doing is po- post his workouts, post his highlights like on Twitter, like nonstop, consistent, consistently. And he got offers just off that. Like once they went and saw him and it was a school that doesn't normally like have these type of schools like going to like his high school but just him consistently posting him mm-hmm. consistently marketing himself like mm-hmm. he ended up getting like a couple offers just from that and mm-hmm. the access and the, the stuff they have access to now it's ridiculous because like you said all these different yeah. recruiting services like they always looking and these college coaches like during the dead period like the thing they doing they on their phones looking at social media looking at tape like yep. and you can all email time. you can email these coaches too if you get the email so that's all they doing uh stop so so uh so dope so so let's talk about you know Al- Alabama basketball and you know Coach Oates and as far as like the things he accomplished so fast and you know how successful you've been so fast and then with the system man it is it's fun to watch you know it's up and down and then we projected to uh you know be be riding the run riding the uh the running again as far as this year with the recruiting class we have coming in and the players that return it back so talk a little bit about you know. Uh, coach Coach O's as a coach and what he'd have done so far up until this point. Uh man, I mean, I mean, <laughs> yeah, it's he, crazy. He it I mean, they, you know, he well, he's come in, you know, he's he's came in and you know, come in and he's done a great job, man, to get the uh, to get the players and stuff to buy into his system. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it's a system that you know that a lot of people you know hadn't hadn't seen or hadn't even you know some tried but hadn't right. even succeeded with it. Um, and then especially in SEC, it's, it's, you know, it's a different type, you know, it's a different type of um, basketball that, he, that he's brought to the SEC because, you mm-hmm. know, most, most of the SEC teams is, you know, it's, it's two, you know, it's, it's three out and two in, two bigs, you know, you right. know two big guys. Right. And so, you know, they, and then the two big guys, maybe one of them might be a, a power forward and they're playing in the, you know, the free throw line extended or some, you know, some three-pointers and that's it. Right. And then, you know, the center force, you know, as to where he wants, you know, five, five outside of the perimeter. And so, and that's something that, you know, saying that, you know, the people don't look at. And like you just said, you know, it's a fun, it's a fun style of basketball. I mean, just think about like who wouldn't want to play a a game of basketball that way. I mean, just, you know, especially for, especially if you're a guard. Oh my God. Yeah. You shoot shoot the ball. (laughs) As As long as you're playing defense, you know what I'm saying? As long as you put the effort on defense, you know, you can pretty much take, you know, you can take, take, you know, difficult shots. You can take different shots and stuff. And right. so who wouldn't want to play with now? Now for a big guy, you know what I'm saying? You know, that way wouldn't be a good thing for, for a lot of big guys because, you know, you got a lot of long rebounds, <laughs> a lot of long rebounds. Right. You know, your guards, right. your guards got to rebound. Your guards got to get the long rebound. So, yeah, right, right. Yeah, exactly. At, you know? Yeah. So at, it was like, so it's like one of the things, man, like, you know what I'm saying? So it'll be good, you know, you know, so, so that's the thing too. So, for a guard, for a guard perspective, perspective man, it's like, ooh, oh, man, yeah. yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying. You can come in there, you can, you know, you can shoot as long as you play defense. I mean, why, why not? Why not? <laughs> Facts, because I know that. I mean, if you playing defense, you just playing hard, man. Like he go, he gonna let you do what you want to do if you had the capabilities. I know, like just after, like after the LSU game, I talk about all the time. He was telling me. You know, he an analytics guy. You know, he's a math teacher and stuff like that. So, you know, he was saying, like, he showed me the paper. He showed me the numbers. He was like, cool. In the first seven to ten seconds, we're top five in the country in scoring. In the last ten seconds, like, we're pretty bad. So, if you ever see me getting on to a guy, it's because I'm telling him to shoot the ball. And I was like, man, I wish – I said, sign, I said that sounds good. Cause I wish I had that because, you know, Coach Grant, he was a defensive coach. But, but uh, yeah. I always say if you put – Coach Grant defense with Coach O's offense. Oh my God, I said it's been crazy because people did not want that smoke with that press. <laughs> yeah, it, it, you yeah. know, it, it, I'll tell you, man. You know, it's just kind of like, you know, you have to look at it though, man. You you, you think about it though, like you know, if you have yeah. a team that's, I don't know, it ain't too many teams with, in fourth man or come forth 
where they have like you know where they have a great offense right. and a great defense, defense and they right. actually win. So it's always it's either one or the other. So either right. it's always a good offense, and then you know what I'm saying then your defense uh, lack or vice right. versa. Yeah. And so and and, it, and it's it's a hard thing to do because man, you put so is. much energy, man, man. on the offensive end. <laughs> man. Yeah. It's hard, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's hard to play defense. It's just like for example, like if you if you look at the NBA or whatever, like if you look at the like the Nets, for example, like the numbers that they put up as a squad. 140, I mean, 150, it's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, crazy. but you gotta think of but but that's what they predicate now because people wanna see offense too. Right. But then also too. They're not. They're not gonna play a whole lot of defense either, man, because it's hard. <laughs> they're too much energy. They just like they yeah. like fit. They got Dan Tony, you know, on the bench. Pretty much the Phoenix Suns were superstars on the team. So I mean, yeah. yeah so so you're right about that because I know there's a lot of teams that we played in college. Like they were offensive minded, and they did not want to play no defense at all. Like they used to get mad at us for continuously running plays. <laughs> so yeah, it's like man, what y'all doing? But they did not want want to play no uh no defense at all. So but uh, but so let's talk about now as far as, you know, uh, some of the things that you're doing now. I know uh, from doing research, you know, from us talking, uh, you know, you're doing a little bit of coaching. And um, you also have a foundation as well, you know, the Erwin Dudley Foundation. And, uh, you know, y'all do camps, you know, uh, community engagements, and also you mentor, which I definitely know uh, is definitely much needed right now. So, so talk about that and as far as, uh, you know, what made you, like, where did that vision come from to make it come into fruition? So my, my man, my vision came from uh, you know, just for me, um, being a being a young boy, man, and yeah, you know what I'm saying, just you know, just you kinda of, just kinda of seeing it and you know, watching my environment and seeing like, okay, no, you do have some, you know, you have role model, but then you don't have enough positive role models. Right. And so right. I wanted to be one of those positive you know, positive figures. Man, you have a lot of guys that they'll go out and you know, they say for example, they'll go out and they'll play and they'll, you know, they'll come, they'll make money, but and they'll do a, do a lot of whole a whole lot of other things, but yeah. they don't actually give back to their community or they they don't consistently, uh, you know, they're not consistently involved in you know in their surroundings. And so, I didn't want to be I I didn't want to be that guy. And so right. I looked at you know what I'm saying I always you know my hometown. I tell everybody it's my hometown is you know but pride and joy. I love being for I love being. Being a, me being from where I'm from, um, right. Uniontown, Alabama, um, and so and I and I just feel like it's it's part of part of um, it's part of my job. I think you know, it's, yeah. you know for me to part be visible and be more, and yeah, exactly, yeah. And be yeah. more active in my in my own community or whatever. Because I can't expect anybody else to come and be active in my community if I'm not doing it myself. And so right. I just it just kind of it's just kind of you know started from there, man. I've been doing camps, man. Uh, I've been doing camps. Uh, down there for about uh, about fifteen years, man. Wow. 15 years. Okay. Free yeah. Camp. It's a free camp. Um. Um. And this year we're gonna do it. Um. June eighteenth and nineteenth, which is a few okay. weeks away. Okay. Um. And it's a free camp. They, you know, they feed them. They get t-shirts. Um. They have we have a speaker comes in to speak to them. Yeah. Um. We and we have fun. We have fun, man. And um. We average normally about a hundred and thirty kids, but this wow. year we, we're only gonna do about sixty five because of, you know because of the um the pandemic and everything. Right. So right. Yeah. and then next year, then the following summer, we'll pick it back up to you know to the way we had it you know before. Mm -hmm. But it's just an opportunity, man, to being being able to get back, man, and being able to to engage in. And being, you know, being able to engage and being able to talk to the youth and just trying to understand them a little bit better. Um, you know, Coach, I got a son that's coming up as well. He's, you know, he's a nine years old. And so me being able to, to be around him and being able to be around his friends and just, you know what I'm saying, talk to them, that, that's that's one of the things. That's my, my pride in George is being able to talk to kids. And, yeah. be, you know, I, I like being around kids or whatever. I feel like I'm a big kid myself. Yeah, honestly, right, but right. I like me them. too, man. Um, yeah, so. Yeah. I, you know, I, I just feel like it's just part of, you know, what I should be doing and what I need to be doing. Like, like you said a few, few seconds ago, my purpose. And so I'm mm -hmm. just passionate about that, man. And just, you know, I love, you know, I love doing it. Yeah. And what's so dope about it, too, is that, you know, with your son being nine years old, he being able to see an example as far as, you know, not yeah. only did you, you know, accomplish all these things in basketball, yeah. but you also giving back to your community and him being able mm -hmm. to see that. And just, you yeah. know, just me, you know, being 28 and stuff like that, like kids remember that stuff. And you yep. being that example for your son, man, that's that's that yep. says a lot, man. And then on top of that, you know, like I always talk about, you know, exposure leads to expansion. And what's what's really yep. important for kids is that, 
you know, not only them like studying, get studying the game, and you know, putting the work in and stuff like that, but also being able to see somebody that they've been to, uh, been the place that they're trying to get to, and being able to actually touch that mm -hmm. person, cause that that plays a huge part too. So yep. just some fact you doing it, and then you know, it's a it's a free uh free camp and stuff like that. Like it's yeah. definitely that's definitely big time. So so dope. So so give the people uh you know your social media handles. I know I don't know if you uh. If you if you take seven, I don't know if you got a TikTok in them, but <laughs> but get a people. Man, you know what? I, and uh so. <laughs> and uh let the people know as far as you know if they want to, you know, come to the camp and and uh you know do the things as far as what you guys had to offer, how they can get in contact with you, and also if people want to support the foundation as well, like how can they um, reach out to you and your team? Okay, so so I have Facebook. This is my name, Erwin Dudley. Then I have okay. uh, Instagram, Erwin underscore Dudley thirty five. Um, and then you I got an Instagram. TikTok, okay, I'm, I didn't know you had an Instagram. Okay, yeah, I thought it was just I Facebook. And, I thought all you have Facebook and MySpace or something like that. <laughs> nah, hey, I, I had MySpace for a hot second. I, hey, I had MySpace for a hot second. I see. Yeah. 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 Um, I do have a Twitter. I I do have a Twitter, but I don't even know my handle on that. But I'm on. Okay. I, 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 I'm I'm I'll be on Twitter every now and then. I I'll check stuff or whatever. Um, for the most part. And then my foundation is Erwin Dudley. This is Erwin Dudley. It's Erwin Dudley Foundation at Gmail dot com. If you want to okay. donate, yeah. through PayPal. Um, and also like I said, I have a website. My website is being redesigned, so I'm gonna come to okay. my website too. But it'll be the same thing. It'll be EarlDailyFoundation dot com. Okay. And so don't you know? I I you know I do I do fundraisers, man. I do um, I do different things, man. Just really trying to you know trying to build my foundation up and just trying to reach out to kids. And then also, as far as with the campus stuff, man, we we only got a few spots left. Right. Ahead. Right. Yeah. I mean, so because yeah, you said you only having like sixty five, right? Uh, sixty five. Yeah. Sixty five. Yeah. yeah. Enough, but, if you reach if you if you email me at Erwin Dudley Gmail Erwin Dudley Foundation at gmail dot com and okay. you know, once you email me I'll send you a registration form back you know if it's you know if we don't if we're not at the number now but I think the last time but I know for the last time we checked we only had like nine spots left okay and yeah. so you know if you want to participate just let me know but like I said it, it's a great opportunity I love doing it and you know mm -hmm. the kids enjoy enjoy doing it so I'm gonna keep giving it and I'll keep doing it just as long as I can so you know All right. and, you know, we we appreciate all the support that we can. That Most we can definitely. Get. Most definitely. So uh so this is another episode of Locker Room Talk with Coop. Make sure you guys like, comment, share this video with somebody y'all think will enjoy it. And also hit that red button, those red letters that say subscribe for your boy. And um E Dub, man, I appreciate you for coming on. Yes, sir, man. I appreciate you, man. Anytime. Again, on the track.